Welcome back to Jacques in the Garden. Today we are going to be playing with fire because we are going to be preserving the cedar beds using the ancient Japanese technique of sho sugiban. So this might seem really counterintuitive. Why would I burn my wood before putting it in my garden? Well, this ancient method is really unique and it's actually something that's long existed for particularly cedar. And the idea is that you burn the outer layer and what that does is it creates a more waterproof, impermeable layer, something that nothing really wants to eat. We already are working with cedar here, and cedar already has some of those natural properties, but we could magnify it if we burn the wood, and there is a little bit more to it. We're not going to be just burning the wood, but step one is to just torch the wood. Before I get too deep into this process, let me explain why you would even want to do this. Now, most wood in the garden will last for a couple years, but eventually the water, the insects, are going to eat it up and it will start to break down. Cedar in particular will last longer than most woods that you generally buy at a big box store. And for example, I have one over here. This is the same cedar bed, same cedar wood, but this is untreated entirely. So I've left this as raw cedar, uncoated, no sealant. And what will happen is this will turn gray over time and that natural gray color of the cedar is going to offer some sort of protection. It's mostly just weathering. But if you burn the wood first like this, you get a much longer lifespan and also you get a pretty cool look. In the end, this is going to look very unique. So let's go ahead and finish this up and we'll see if you prefer this versus unfinished versus finished wood. And I'll show you all three different examples if you wanted to do this to your raised beds at home. Now, what I'm using here to do this is actually just a propane roofing torch. This is something you could get at like a Harbor Freight for something like 20 bucks or your local big box store. And this is just used for roofing, tar down paper, things like that. And actually it's a great tool to have in the garden because this is also a fantastic way of dealing with weeds. All you have to do is roast the weeds with fire. That's an organic approved method of actually doing weed control. So not only can you preserve your wood beds with this, but you can also do weed control. But now let's get into the preserving this bed situation. What we're going to do here is roast this wood. If you take a close look over here, so none of these are done yet, but this is the cracking that you see here is what's referred to as alligator skin texture. That is us really burning the wood to the point where the oils are coming up, they're bubbling, they're cracking, and that's pretty much where we want to go to. So I want this level of char across the board on every single surface, on every single piece of this bed. So we're going to start with the side paneling here. Once I torch them down, I'll show you the next step in the process. So now we've done one side of the bed. I will be flipping this over and doing the back side as well. So you could see the difference there right now. Now, one thing I want to mention is that you will think that this will stain you and it will stain you at the beginning, but we're going to take care of that at the end of this process. So this is what we're going for, full dark crackling on the wood. And now I just have to do it to the rest of it. So I'd say that took about 30 seconds to a minute to do one side of these panels. So now before we move on to the next step, I'm just gonna flip them over and roast the other side. To maximize the use of this method, you wanna burn every single section of the board. So I did the ends, both faces, and now we need to do the long edges. Now that all the wood burning is done, we can move on to the next step, which is to prep the surface. So right here is one that I just finished. So we're gonna go from this fully burnt board to this look. And remember, we started with this. So this is the color that you're ultimately going to end up with, with the burnt look. It's almost like a coffee stain. So I recommend getting a wire brush that either fits in your palm like this or a short handle one. Personally, I find that this one works best because it's wider, but here's what you're looking for. You're going from char to this. And what you'll see is that if I brush this again, there's no more major stuff coming off. So that's the point when you're finished with the brushing process. So what I'm going to do is now finish brushing all these boards and then we're actually going to be hosing it off before we finish up the process. All the wood has been burnt. I've brushed it. I've removed all the grit and I'm extremely dirty from it. My face is covered in ash. My knees are covered. And I did wear a mask for most of the process when I wasn't talking. And I highly encourage you to because this stuff is fine and it gets absolutely everywhere. But now we're moving into the water phase and we should be safe. So all we're doing here is we're trying to blast all that leftover debris out of the grooves of the grain of wood. And that'll make it much easier to do the next step of the process. So all I'm going to do now is fan it with water until it basically runs clean. Everything's been hosed off and the water definitely ran pretty black. So it was a good thing to do because for the next step, if you want to seal your wood, you definitely want to wash it first. The benefit of washing too is that now it won't stain your hand when you touch it because you washed off all that charcoal. But this is basically what it would look like when it is finally sealed. 
Now the ceiling is technically optional. It will make this last much, 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 much longer, but even just burning it like this will extend the life of any wood that you use, and especially true with something like cedar. So I'm gonna leave this to dry and we'll check back in a bit and see if we uh, end up sealing this up or not. I haven't quite decided yet. I'm going to wait to see what it looks like when it's dry. It is the next day and the wood is 100% fully dried. So here's what we're looking at right now. We have this wonderful color that we've developed just solely from the burning process. It looks really nice. It has a lot of richness. You can see the grain popping now. I'm actually in love with this. I think this is amazing. I wish I did it to my other bed that you could see back there, but maybe in the future I will. So anyway, what we're doing next is sealing. Sealing is technically optional. You can leave it at this burn stage, which will offer some protection, but this color will fade over time unless you seal it. Now what I'm using here, and I'll show you what one board looks like at the moment in my right hand here versus this one is tongue oil. Tongue oil is derived from a tongue tree. And the nice thing about it is it's food contact safe, it's natural, it will harden and actually seal over time with like three to four coats and layers, but it is not UV stable. Now they do make one, this company that I'm using called Real Milk Paint, called Outdoor Defense Oil, which I have ordered, but it's out of stock right now. That has zinc oxide, which will become sort of a sunscreen. I will put that on later, but the first couple of coats, I'm just going to be putting tongue oil because I have it handy. I want to seal this color in while it's good. So all we're doing is taking a brush here and this cedar wood is pretty thirsty. So it's going to drink it up pretty quickly and you want to be very aggressive. You want to put a lot, you want to let it sit on the surface. And what will happen is that over the course of the next half hour to 40 minutes, this oil will seep into the wood. It'll penetrate into the wood and then you're gonna put another coat on, another coat, probably three to four coats. And over the next month, this oil will physically harden and it'll become a actual impermeable waterproof barrier. But what I'm going to do now is just simply coat both sides of the board, let it sit for 40 minutes and I'll show you what it looks like. And I'm probably, like I said, going to do two or three coats just like this. Now that it's been 40 minutes, it's time to wipe off any excess oil. It might be hard to see because it's getting very dark and the wood got much darker after getting oiled up. But all I'm going to be doing is taking a clean rag like this and wiping away any of the oil that's pooling on the surface. That's going to allow the rest of it to seep in and harden instead of just making a weird layer on top. So it's definitely going to come up with some dirty rags and be aware if you're using an oil like this, these rags, if left in a pile, can spontaneously combust. So make sure that you lay them out flat, not stacked so they could dry before you dispose them. So here's one that's been wiped and here's one that's not wiped. You could see the difference there. There's just definitely a lot of oil sitting on the surface. So you wanna make sure you seep that up in a little rag. So here's what we have left. It is obviously dirty and oily, but once this oil sets, none of this color is going to transfer to you. Even my hands right now are clean. The only reason this is dirty is because I dragged it into the grain. So that's what it should look like now. Shiny, but not like wet, visibly wet on the surface. We're gonna leave this to cure for probably a full day. And then tomorrow I'll go on and put another coat. After days of June gloom today, it looks like we finally have some sunshine. And here's what we're left with. I'm pretty happy with this. I didn't do a perfect job of the oil section right here. I let it pull too deep. So it's sort of building up, but this is going to be outside in the element. It's going to get beat up. And some of those imperfections, I'm not actually that worried about because I will be doing another layer of oil once I get that outdoor defense oil in. So at this point, I actually feel pretty confident that I could just put this together and be totally good. Now, the one thing that I'll say is that the more coats you put on, the darker it'll get and the longer it'll retain that color. But even a single coat should offer some protection, should help keep this color in place. And you could always touch it up on the outside at least. So let's go ahead and put this together and see what the final product looks like. The plan is to swap out this L-shaped bed with that cedar bed that we just finished up. The reason why is because I want a little bit more square footage. This is convenient that I could walk into this, but I could easily reach any side of a four foot bed from any one of the three sides that I'll have access to up against this wall. So I'd rather do that and actually save this for a different project. So we're just going to do a quick little swap here, try to save as much of the soil as possible and then top off the bed and see how it looks tied up with uh, everything else in the garden. The bed is installed and I have to say, I love the way it looks. I love the placement of it. I've gone ahead and put two determinate tomatoes and some watermelons in there. The watermelons will sprawl and ramble through the back of my garden here. But the next thing I wanna do here is go ahead and put on a final seal. I got the outdoor defense oil, which is tongue oil that's been blended in with, I think 
citrus oil and uh, zinc oxide. And the zinc oxide is basically what's in sunscreen and that'll help protect us from UV damage. So let's see how much more it can soak in. We've already put a thick layer of tongue oil on. So now this is just to help seal the deal, if you will, and uh, hopefully maintain this color for a decent amount of time. I'm expecting this to look a little bit more, oops, <laughs> a little bit more sleek. It should soak in a decent amount of this oil now. And uh, we'll check back at the end of the day and see what the final product looks like. I think we could all agree that this looks absolutely wonderful. I love the rich tonality of the colors. I like the variation across it. Some dark spots, some redder spots. Just looks really wonderful in the garden and I can't wait to see it absolutely filled up with plants. Now, if you don't wanna go through the process of burning the wood, scraping it, sealing it, it's honestly a bit time consuming. I want to give you guys a couple other options. The first option is to just do nothing. So this is a plain cedar board that has begun to age. You'll start seeing these black spots and sort of grayness appearing. Overall, this entire plank will turn gray with time. That's just what cedar does when it ages. Now, if you don't want it to turn gray, you can still do the tongue oil application, which is what this is, and it'll retain that rich sort of red cedar color for at least a few years. If you keep applying this coating every single year, you should be able to maintain that color. So untreated, just tongue oil, and then of course the Shosugiban method. So let me know what you guys think, which one's your favorite. I love this. I will probably do this to all of my cedar beds or any cedar stuff I do in the future, but I'd love to hear you guys' thoughts down in the comments.